Hey guys, welcome to my first tutorial on Construct 2. Uh, I thought I would start a new series um, based on pretty much the audience uh, comments and like I would do this first kind of general tutorial and we'll go through just the normal stuff like uh, just basic stuff and then from the comments I get I'll change direction and kind of start doing whatever people have in mind or you know have ideas for or whatever uh, so it can it'll definitely change uh, all the time every episode just based on what comments I get and what ideas people have uh, so to get into the tutorial here the first one this is your start page uh, there are some examples you can look at and your recent projects you've been working on and then there's also uh, just open any project and new project and all these can also be found up here uh, in the menu so we'll pick new project and there's a lot of templates that are already made and you could probably find one that suits your needs for what you're doing uh, at this at the particular time that you're uh, starting a project but I'm just going to do a completely new empty thing and uh, get rid of the start page here you can close these tabs just like you'd expect with the X and uh, so it gives us a layout and an event sheet the event sheet is like the programming and there will be events and actions and it's like causes and effects it's pretty simple don't have to worry about coding unless you want to and then this is the layout and this is where all the gameplay happens and uh, each layout if you ever do if you've ever used game maker it's like rooms on there I think they were called rooms and uh, on other things it's you can sort of think of it like layers but not in the same sense as usual because there's also actual layers here that are what your images are on and uh, your background has a layer separate from say your your foreground and your uh, sprite layer and all that stuff but the layouts are actually just the different areas the different stages or the like the title screen is different from the, that would be a separate layout from the option screen and the first stage and things like that and then there's uh, separate event sheets that you can use or you can put them all in one event sheet and that's just all the programming and each layout can be linked to different event sheets. Whenever you make a new layout, don't forget to link the event sheet because I think it starts out blank. So if your programming isn't working, that could be the problem. You don't even realize it a lot of times. And then there's also the sound effects and the music and everything. And then over here we have the name of the layout, what event sheet it's linked to, um, the active layer, uh, like the size and the margins and uh, things like that. And if you want more options you can go to the project properties and uh, this has a little more um, in-depth stuff. And if you want to go back to the previous options you can just click somewhere and it will come back. So this is specifically to the layout and this is to the whole project. So you can tell it which browser you want to use um, usually, I mean as a, as a preview uh, usually I use Chrome because it seems like it performs the best um, but you need to test in all browsers usually and um, there's like full screen and browser these are pretty self-explanatory uh, so let's just start making anything here um, this dotted line is like what the camera is gonna see and that is your um, window size and um, that means like if we say we had a character and he moved out of here we need the camera to follow him over to this other side of the screen uh, or you can just change the layout size to actually be the same like if you're doing a puzzle game or something or an app that's specifically for one screen only you can just have your layout and your um, browser screen size the same and then of course you can just do full screen and browser and there's a few settings for that too 
So first of all, we're going to double click and you can add all these things. Um, so we're just going to add a sprat, which is an image that's uh, that can be anything. Uh, it can be your player or other tiles or whatever. Everything's pretty much going to be sprats. And uh, we'll make it 32 by 32 just to keep it. I don't know, I always kind of like to do things in those 16 increments or 8 increments. And uh, over here are your tools for the image editor, it's just like a basic paint top program. And uh, you can use a pencil if you want like pixelated graphics. You can use the brush if you don't, and you can change the hardness down if you want like less pixelated stuff. And uh, um, you, you can also just load something you made in another image editor like Photoshop or Paint or GIMP or whatever you use. I usually just draw stuff in here, especially if it's pixel art. Um, so, I don't know, let's make um, a character here. I'm just going to do one real quick. You guys don't want to watch me draw a character for an hour or something. So here's our player. Nice and happy. And let's give his, I don't know, head a little color at least. Okay, now we can tell. We'll stand out from the background a little bit. And uh, you just close it and it'll automatically save. You don't have to actually save it as a file. But you do have to save your project. So you can go up here to save it. There's a few different ways to save if you save as. And there's like save as one file, save as multiple folders. Uh, just save as one file though unless you're really doing something big so we'll name this tutorial um, game and save it and so now you can load that file wherever you put it each time and it'll come back to where you were you know how saving works so here's our player and we can name him player this is what layer he's on. We'll eventually need to add new layers and stuff, but for right now, I'll just add a tiled background and resize it to 3232. And we'll make a simple, um, like, kind of grass area. Uh, so here will be just some dirt and some patches. In the dirt just to get a little something going here and then there's also the flood fill like most programs have just fills in the color for you and so this is okay for the tutorial and a tiled background will do this tile the background or tile um, whatever image you have and it's a lot easier on the CPU if you do this, and it's a lot less time consuming than actually copying a bunch of tiles. Now if you wanted to do something precise, you can go to View and Snap to Grid, and you can change whatever it is, or keep it at 32. So we will just make a little area here for our player to move around on. And now we can make, we can right click, oh to copy this I just control clicked and uh, drug it over and then to delete you just press delete and to select things you click on them. You can select multiple things as usual by dragging a, a selection around it, selection box and you can alternatively click something and control click it or click something and shift click it. Control A is select all, Control C is copy, Control V is paste, just like everything else, pretty much. Uh, I don't know Mac controls, I think it's like command and those same things, pretty much. But uh, now we'll make another tiled background that'll be <clears throat> like just dirt underneath. So we could make one like this, or we could just clone the object top. And that's different than copying it because if we copy it, it's the same object repeated. But if we clone it, we can make a whole different thing from what's already here. 
So we can say select this part, copy it with control C, flip it. Uh, well, I need to flip it, but uh, you get the idea. We can do this, bring it down here, copy. There we go. Okay, and now we can do just real quick, I'll do a sky so we can get that out of the way. There it is. Now I can right click this. And I would send it to another layer usually, but I'll just send the Z layer down or the Z order. There's actual kind of like layers inside layers, and that's the Z order. So I can send it to the bottom of this layer in the order, and it'll go to the bottom just like this. So now we can save it again, and our guy is going to need controls. So um, we can add a behavior and uh, these are like easy programming things just fast one click ads um, so we, we want him to be a platformer so we just say that and so now he's got default controls here's all the settings for the behavior we just added save it okay we can test it like this or here either one I'm sure there's a hotkey, but I don't remember what it is. So let's test it. It did run in Chrome. Our graph fell through. That means this needs to be a solid. So we change the behavior on it to be solid. This to be solid. Uh, well, this is variable. That's different. Okay. So see, since I put this as a solid, since I added that behavior on this, since this is a copy of it, it also got that without me having to put it on every single one. But this is a different thing entirely, so got to make it solid, but that'll also make this a solid. Okay, so now he should not fall through. You don't have to save every time you preview, I just do it anyway. So the default controls are the arrow keys, and they work. Now our guy goes off the edge of the screen, so we can add another behavior and it will be bound to layout so now he can't go outside the screen and yeah works fine uh, so I don't want to get too long here I really want people to tell me what to do uh, we can build a whole game if everybody wants to eventually just gradually get there we can do random stuff whatever it's a series completely driven by the audience and the comments and the messages so tell me what you guys want to do next we can continue with a platformer we can do something totally different just tell me whatever ideas you have and uh, thanks for watching